Hello, I'm going to present you some recent advances in the search of Galdeghi binary systems using a learned representation. In, uh, first, on an event of context, in terms of physics, we expect a million of sources and uh, we would like to characterize tens of thousands of them. And the Galtic binaries will be at the foreground of many other signals of physical interest. In terms of data analysis, they have a low signal to noise ratio, which means that we have to make observations over a long time to detect them. And even if we manage to characterize individually part of them, uh, the rest will be part of a confusion noise, uh, which we'll have to evaluate. As in any realistic experiment, there will be uh, artifacts in the signal, gap glitches, and non stationarities. It turns out that gaps for galactic binaries have been studied in terms of parametric method three years ago by Tambagian collaborator, and here I will address the same question with non-parametric methods. So let's uh, have a bit more of information in terms of gaps. In ESA, we expect three types of gaps, which we call in here a small, medium, or large, and basically uh, their duration range between from minutes to days. And uh, overall, the LISA duty cycle is expected to be 75%. Where well, the impact of these gaps on galactic binary, if we look at uh, TDI channel versus frequency, we see uh, the red plot which corresponds and the ungapped signal and the green plot which corresponds to the gap signal. And if we zoom in, we see that some of the peaks corresponding to binaries that we can detect by eye become drawn in the signal, which make the assessment of the impact of the gaps in the LISA data an urgent question. Let's have a look at a uh, non-parametric method on first pass data representation. This non-parametric method can be used for event detection or e event recovery. The main assumption is that uh, over in a certain dictionary, uh, the representation is sparse, which means that all the energy of the signal is concentrated over a few atoms. Uh, we use it first for galaxy binaries, but in principle, we can use it for uh, different type of sources. We just have to change the dictionaries. And the series of plots here uh, show how changing the number of um, atoms in the dictionary allow to obtain a better and better agreement with the target signal. The sparse estimate is in orange and the blue uh, expected signal uh, show that uh, the more atoms we add, the best is the recovery. How is it done? It is done using fast iterative solvers. So H is the signal estimate for TDI channel A. Gamma is a threshold which we set at a frequency by frequency. D corresponds to the data and S is the power spectral density. Uh, we have a direct relation between threshold and uh, the false positive rate, and uh, which is manifest through the relation between the estimated signal H and the data D because uh, um, the reconstructed sparse estimate is the relative excess of the signal amplitude to the threshold multiplied by the initial data sets uh, or uh, set to zero. I mentioned uh, the description above for a TDI channel generically called E, but we can process all TDI channels jointly and we can also perform a joint PSD estimation. Um, we can work uh, by the frequency by frequency or using frequency block to account for signal substructure, and it is what is meant by the figures on the right, and the structure is modular, which means that these tools can be plugged in bigger pipelines. And uh, in terms of uh, detection, we use them on the LDC challenges 1.3 on galactic verification binary. And we see on the first line that we manage to detect in orange with those sparse estimate uh, the various peaks corresponding to galactic binaries in the data. Uh, the target signal appear in blue. And uh, we obtain uh, a good reconstruction either in frequency or in time. And if we zoom on the peak, we see that the sparse estimate uh, reconstruct uh, almost faithfully the substructure of the peak while we lose some information on the tails of the signal. But still, uh, it works with the gap data and we can deal efficiently with a 25% loss. However, we would love to 
improve our description of the waveform. For this, we will use a so-called interpolating autoencoder. It relies on the hypothesis that uh, signals of physical interest usually live on a, a smooth, low-dimensional manifold. So not a vector space, but a manifold. There's some non-linearity on it, which allow to have some accurate signal representation. And this kind of procedure is well suited to all kinds of situations where we have a restricted training set. So let's consider that uh, in this training set, we use uh, a few uh, reference points, which we we'll call anchor points in the following. And uh, so on the signal of manifold and physical interest, um, we have a nonlinear representation. We unfold this representation through an encoder and uh, arrives to a latent space, which is a vector space, where we can perform linear interpolation. Then we fold again this manifold with the decoder and go back to the physical space. We can use this to detect uh, the presence of signal. And to do so, since we have something which is low dimensional, we can exploit the robustness against noise to detect loud enough signals. Suppose that we start with a lot of noise drawing. Uh, the autoencoder will uh, detect uh, something uh, in some uh, most of the times with uh, by overfeeding, and uh, we will obtain what we call an estimated SNR, which corresponds to the uh, bottom uh, left plot, uh, where uh, dealing with uh, noise only situations uh, amounts to estimated SNR between, say, four and seven. Now, if we use no noise only signal, but actual signal with uh, sources uh, with SNR 5 and 10, we can consider the various uh, realizations of the noise distribution. And we see that uh, we can make a clear distinction between uh, noise only data and uh, data where there are true signal, which means in practice that we can detect all signals with a signal to noise ratio larger than seven, which is a marked improvement to the sparse modeling presented before. We can also uh, detect two galactic binaries, suppose that we take um, data made of uh, two galactic binaries with different SNR on noise. Um, here we played with the 32 and 44 as SNRs for uh, the sources one and two. And we see uh, in the various plots here, uh, one source in blue and the other source in orange, and uh, the reconstruction on the interpolating auton color in green. And we observe that uh, even on the tails of the signal, which are basically drawn under the noise, we manage to really retrieve the physical signal and obtain very good residual. So uh, we managed to extract the signal and it's opened a lot of uh, potential applications to signal compression, denoising, subtraction, study of overlapping sources. To conclude, we have developed a new non-parametric method uh, relying on the key idea that will search for signals with adapted representation. Uh, we uh, tested it with uh, both gapped and ungapped data and obtained an efficient reconstruction. It works as well with a large number of separated sources and the learned representation brings a significant improvement. This framework is flexible and can be in principle adapted to any situation with the restriction parameter uh, training set, for instance, because of computing time. Thank you for your attention.